Hello and welcome to The Notorious Needle. I'm Sarah and I want to help you break the rules of conventional cross stitch so you can stitch whatever you want. Thank you for joining my live floss tube. Hopefully you've brought some stitching and you can stitch with me. Um, I just wanted to review a couple of things uh, while we're waiting for people to arrive uh, from that happened between last month and now. So first, Happy New Year. Yay! We all made it through the horrible year. That was 2020. <sighs> and so far, how did a friend of mine put it? It looks like 2021, or 2020 went and put on a wig and came back as 2021. <laughs> oh well. It'll get better, it'll get better. Um, so just a quick reminder that I updated the cross stitch calculator. So now, in addition to calculating how much fabric you need um, by including a margin in between your stitching and the frame, it now includes an additional margin for the framing part um, and a recommended um, floss count and recommended needle size and recommended floss count for back stitch. So the link is down below for the cross stitch calculator. I actually use it all the time, so even if nobody else uses it, I'm going to leave it there for me because sometimes I can't be bothered <laughs> calculating in my head or guesstimating or whatever. I found it to be really helpful, so if you like it, let me know. If there's something you think I should add that will help you, let me know and I'll see if I can figure out a way to add that too. Let's see, the next thing... Oh, there is a new free pattern in the Notorious Nook. And actually, I ended up um, posting it to a couple of cross-stitch groups that I belong to. Um, the link is down below. You don't have to sign up for anything. You just click on the pattern and it opens the PDF right away. And this is in response to the events of this week. MAGA is a domestic terrorist organization. I whipped it up really quick um, to try to commemorate this week uh, because we've never seen anything like it and I really hope that we never do again. Um, the insanity, I, actually I, I can't even say insanity because it's an insult to people with um, mental health disabilities. The pure violence and cruelty from Wednesday. Uh, we need to remember what happened. We need to remember what happens when our elected leaders use violent rhetoric to stir up their base. Um, you gotta be careful with the words that you choose. Words matter. Words have power. And um, I got into a conversation with my mom, um, not an argument, a discussion, that maybe domestic terrorism is kind of too strong of a term. Uh, first, if you look it up, it fits the definition. Um, using violence to change politics uh, is the definition of terrorism. But also, she warned me about painting a wide variety of people with a broad brush and I don't believe that this pattern does that. I am defining the motivation of a particular organization and every terrorist organization from a layman's terms has people who are willing to commit horrible atrocities and acts of violence as much as possible but also people who sympathize on the fringes. So I think that's appropriate. Anyway, um, if you want to stitch it up, again, the link is down below. You don't have to sign up for anything. You just click on the PDF and, and you click on the link and the PDF pops up and uh, you get the pattern. So enjoy um, and remember. Uh, oh, also, so I'm going to go ahead and start stitching while I talk. Here we go. I am still stitching the Dragonfly Fairy. Here is the, the pattern booklet. 
This is put out by um, Jeanette Cruz Designs um, and created by Sam Hawkins. Um, you can see the, the picture a little closer below. It's really pretty. This is part of um, a three-part series of fa fairies. There's the Dewdrop Fairy, the Dragonfly Fairy, and the Spiderweb Fairy. I've already stitched the Dewdrop Fairy, and I've already stitched two parts of the Dragonfly Fairy. So this is the first part I stitched. Oh, there you go. Now you can see it. Move this down like that. There she is. She's so pretty. Um, there are metallics here in the border. This is um, metallic gold. I used uh, the DMC Light Effects metallic gold. Um, what is it? It's number uh, E3821. And then um, in her in her wings, I used a metallic green. It called for a, a more pale metallic green. Um, but this is what I had already, and I didn't want to go get another one. So this is what I used, and I kind of like it because it makes the veins stick out of, of her dragonfly wings a little bit more than like in in the called for pattern. Let's see, maybe this is a little close up. Yeah. So the veins are a little more subtle in the uh, the sample that they stitched, but I, I really like it. And then she has this like, I forget what this is called. It's part of her dress. And then here's what the bottom looks like. So that is the first part that I stitched. Don't worry, all those folds will come out when I wash it and um, iron it. And with metallics, uh, you can wash it. Don't, don't scrub it too much because it, it might cause them to um, stick out and uncoil and they, they get caught on each other. Um, I, uh, you want to put some kind of thin fabric or layer between the iron and your cross stitch. No steam, and you can iron it that way. And what I will probably do is I will probably tack it into this frame. I don't know if you can see this frame. You can see that this frame uses um, thumbtacks here, and I will probably tack it into the frame while it dries to try and keep it um, to uh, try and keep it straight and taut while it's drying. So that was the first part of this three part, this particular fairy. And then I stitched part two. I started a couple of months ago. It's almost finished. I just have to do the gold border, but I didn't want to do that today because it's really hard for me to do that in a, in a frame um, without being able to flip it over. Because <laughs> uh, the, the metallic, the DMC, Light Effects Metallics, have you guys ever used them? Like, they're affectionately known as Satan's ass hair. I say affectionately with sarcasm. Um, anyway, it's, <laughs> I didn't think I'd be able to stitch it without making a horrible mess. Because <laughs> I can't flip this over to anchor the thread underneath. So I will finish that later. Uh, but I did start the other side. So the fairy has has two dragonflies on either side of her, and this is the other side dragonfly. So you have one on the left and one on the right, and as you're looking to her, it's the one on your right. But of course, the middle of the pattern is cut off at the page break, so that makes it difficult. So I decided to get a little bit of a head start um, before I went live so I could, so I could stitch without like having too much trouble finding where I am and at least stay on one page and not going back and forth between the page break. Such a pain, right? Oh, alas, sometimes the software doesn't help. It just breaks where it wants to and you're kind of stuck with it. So this is what I'm stitching right now. Let's see, I've got three here. Um, so a while back, I think it was mid-December. Um, I did a poll for you uh, and I asked you to let me know if you would prefer 
Um, that the next thing released by the Notorious Needle be another set of patterns that might go in like a, a different room in your house. Um, similar to the Kitchen Goddess collection, which I really enjoyed. Um, super silly and snarky and I really hate cooking, so it spoke to that for me. Or if you would rather I try doing a stitch along um, or SAL, S-A-L for stitch along. And it was really close actually. So on the YouTube poll, the, um, the, the additional pattern collection won out, uh, but on the Facebook group, the stitch along won out and uh, by a larger margin. So the next release from the Notorious Needle will be the first stitch along. Yay! <laughs> I'm excited. It's going to be a lot of work. I already designed the pattern. I'm, I've started to test stitch it. I want to make sure that it makes sense, that it's not a pain, that it's an enjoyable, easy for you to stitch pattern. And um, you want to see a sneak peek? Let me know if you want to see a sneak peek. Um, whew, it's going to be a lot of work, but I want it to be a lot of fun. And I, and um, the thing about stitch alongs is that they're like community events. Have you guys ever done one? They're, they're a lot of fun. I did one, um, was it last year? I think it was the year before I did one with the witchy stitcher. She's awesome. You should follow her. She does like Halloween themed everything and Halloween is my favorite holiday. So I follow her. Um, and she had this stitch along that was um, the, the universal monster cell, she called it. And it was this big mansion. It was huge with like a full moon in the background. And then it had, I want to say it had nine rooms, might have been six. And, and each room was a different monster, like in a different scene. So you had like Dracula and you had the Bride of Frankenstein and you had... Um, Swamp thing and it was really beautiful. Well done. Each room Was a, it didn't take that long to stitch it was you know maybe Well, I'm, I'm guessing now somewhere between like 50 by 50 stitches and 100 by 100 stitches so not overly large but enough to keep you busy and um, So cute so cute. She did those characters justice and they had like little motifs that like went with the character's um, personality and lore, which was cool. And uh, it was a lot of fun. And, and when, you, when you did the stitch along, every, every pattern was released. Um, but instead of just getting like this file in your inbox, right, she wrote up this like mini bio of each monster. Um, so you got to learn a little bit about the monster's lore and, and where they came from and um, a little bit about like the movie history, which I thought was really cool. Uh, anyway, so it was like, it was more than just a pattern. It was like a little piece of history, you know, uh, to the theme of the pattern. And I really enjoyed that. Sarah Clemens wrote, would love even just a hint, never done one before, I'm so excited. Okay, Sarah, I'll show you what I've stitched so far. It's not much. I think I have it over here. So it's going to be called We Believe. And this is what I've stitched so far. So this is your sneak preview. <laughs> it's going to be very colorful, bright colors. Um, and let's see, I don't have a date yet, but when did I, I wrote this down. Okay, so the next floss tube is scheduled for February 6th, and by then I will have a date for the release of the Notorious Needle We Believe Stitch Along. So this is going to be, like I said in the poll, this is going to be more inclusive. It's it's going to have positive, um, more a more positive message, um, very bright colors. Uh, and so this is, this is what I've stitched so far. <laughs> Hopefully I will have it done in the next month or so. 
Oh, let me see. I am lost in my pattern already. Where am I? Let's see. One, two, three, up one, two. One, two, three, up one, two. Is this the right place? One, two, three. It is not. Is this the right place? It is. Okay. Now I'm in the right place in my pattern. Um, so there you go. A little sneak peek of the stitch along coming up very soon. So I, I want it to be like a more immersive experience. I, I really enjoyed the Witchy Stitcher stitch along. There's a bunch going on now. Um, I follow Caterpillar Cost Stitch. They're doing a stitch along. Um, a, still like a wintry theme and um, snarky and modern. The Cross Stitch group, they're doing like a, a mandala um, stitch along and they're offering different palettes, uh, which I thought would be really cool. So I don't know, I'm thinking about like a bright color palette and maybe like a pastel palette on a, on like a darker Ada. What do you think? Would you like the opportunity? You know what? I stitched this wrong. Would you like to, um, see different palettes or do you think that's like too much it's confusing <laughs> don't do it <laughs> it's horrible <laughs> uh but i thought i thought it might be pretty i don't know I'm, I'm gonna experiment with that i think i like that idea of having like a little bit of choice because a lot of people with every pattern like we all like to adjust colors like even just this dragonfly fairy i changed the color of the little veining on her wings we supplement with what we have in our stash or you know we change the colors all together to suit us there's um, a hashtag on um instagram called representation matters um i also follow the sunshine stitchers um they're another group in south florida they're fantastic and when COVID's over i can't wait to go meet them in real life because they're literally like 20 minutes down the street um and I tried to before COVID, but uh, they were full. <laughs> so I will, I will try again. But anyway, the Sunshine Stitchers, I heard on their most recent um, floss tube that there, this hashtag on Instagram called Representation Matters, where a lot of cross stitchers are changing the skin tones and the patterns to um, people of color, not just like the super pasty pale like me. Um, in an effort to encourage um, designers and stitchers, oops, drop the pattern, ugh, to include a wider representation of folks in cross stitch. Um, and I think that this is a noble cause. So in that way, people are changing the colors of their cross stitch like we always have, but in a way that um, it's more meaningful. It means something to us. It's more inclusive. Um, I don't know. I, I like the idea of it, and I'm going to try that out. I did it with, uh, I don't know if you saw, <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's a series of patterns called Heart, the Hearts and Dicks series. It's like five patterns on my website, and um, each pattern has the word dick or dicks in it, and it's like snarky stuff, right? Eat a bag of dicks or don't be a dick, stuff like that. And then in the border, you have little pink hearts and dicks. And there's four different skin tones of little penises in the border, which I don't know. It was, it was silly, but fun. Definitely irreverent, which is totally my style. Let's see, where am I going with this? Okay. So I'm doing four. Um, yeah, so I, I love this, uh, representation matter matters hashtag. Also when I did the, um, the quarantine Christmas patterns, like it was Santa and Mrs. Claus and the elf, but then there was also like a snowman and, um, a reindeer, um, like Santa and Mrs. Claus and the elf were available and a couple of different skin tones. So it matters. It matters not just for grown-ups to feel validated, but it matters that like little kids see 
um, people that they look up to that look like them. So I love that. I love that idea. Have you guys, have you heard of it? Have you um, done that? And, and how do you frequently change your patterns when you stitch? Like, um, do you change it because you don't like it? Or maybe change it because you happen to have a different color? I know my mom does that all the time. Usually works out. Sometimes it's funny because I, I had a different color, like orange, uh, and I substituted, I think it was 740 for 970 because I couldn't find 970 anywhere and lo and behold, it's been discontinued. <laughs> At least that's what I, I read, that it was discontinued and replaced with 740 and I thought, aha, I felt very justified. I felt very justified in my changing the pattern. I don't even remember what pattern it was. It might have been one that I that I made. And I'm just like, hey, I can't find 970 anywhere, so I'm gonna use 740. And when you look at them, I think they're in the uh, the color chart, which I don't know where that is. I think it's in the drawer behind me. When you look at them, they're almost the same color, so it makes total sense. Definitely makes total sense. I hope I'm doing this right because I really don't want to redo this later. It's hard to do this stitching and talking at the same time. When I stitch with my mom usually or I'll stitch with my best friend um, who works on Saturdays now, boo, so she doesn't come to my lives anymore, but I miss her. Uh, I'll see her later. But when I stitch with them, like I, I stop stitching and then I talk and then I continue stitching because stitching and talking definitely makes you mess up your stitching. <sighs> For sure. All right, so I'm gonna come down here. So the part of this pattern that I'm stitching here is just the, I don't even know what they are, like the, uh, this bit here. I'm not sure, it's some kind of plant. I don't know what kind of plant it is. Does it even say in the description? I don't know. I don't think it does. Let's see. Nope, it just tells you what the cover model was stitched with. Huh. Well, no idea of what that plant is. Oh well, I like it. It's kind of fluffy, you know? And I stitched this on, um, like an ivory, this is ivory 14 count eight o'clock. And I, I'm really glad that all of this has a lot of outline. It's all, all of these colors, this is outlined. The dragonfly is not outlined, just the wings, but like all these little plants and stuff are outlined, thank goodness, because stitching on ivory, duh, it won't even show up. I don't know what I was thinking when I stitched the first one. I actually started it years ago and I just recently decided to pick it up again. Let's see, where am I? Um, I am here and I need to go down one to another one. So I think I need to go here. Three, yep, okay, so that's where I'm at. Oh, I think <laughs> next time I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll stitch this up to a place where I can stitch it without thinking and then I can just not pause and look at the pattern. Do you guys, do you talk a lot when you stitch or do you just stitch? When I stitch by myself, I like to listen to YouTube videos or um, audio books. I'm really into audio books. Or what do you listen to or what do you do while you're stitching? Do you chit chat? Do you watch TV? Sometimes I'll binge watch something I've seen a million times so that when I hear it, I can envision what's happening on the TV, but I don't have to like actually look away from my stitching to know what's going on because I've seen it a million times. <laughs> um, let's see, that's three. Now I've got two here. This is coming out a little bit messy. 
Normally I railroad too as I go. Maybe I can still do it. It just takes longer. Sarah says, looks like the top of wheat or that grass that grows in swamp water. Oh, maybe. Do you mean like Everglades grass? Because maybe the top of it, the fluffy top, but you, you might be right about the wheat. I don't know. I've never seen wheat in real life. Have you? I will, I've only seen it in pictures. One here. Oh, um, another quick update. So um, I think last time I mentioned that Fabulous Fred was going to be entered into the uh, Fabulous Fred, which is my 3D cross stitch unicorn. Is he back there? He's behind the treasure box. Um, he was going to be entered into the Florida State Fair, but the Florida State Fair has been delayed. I already filled out the application and paid the application fee. It's three bucks, you guys. Three bucks. It's awesome. <laughs> the prize isn't much either, but you know, you get bragging rights. Um, but they delayed, I think the fair is delayed till May, so now I have to ma mail him out by April. That's okay, because I get to enjoy him a little longer. Um, and even though he is 100% cross, well, 90% cross stitch and like 20% um, overcast stitch, uh, because he's on, pla well, it's not plastic canvas, it's perforated plastic, but it's close enough to plastic canvas. They said that I have to enter him as uh, in a needlepoint camp category for plastic canvas because I guess the medium kind of overrides the stitches. I don't know. Um, I guess we'll see. So he's going to go, he's going to get to stay with me for another couple of months. And uh, I'll get to enjoy him a little longer. And I'll get him back eventually. Uh, Sarah writes, never. Oh my gosh, that is crazy to me. I guess that is just where I live in Kentucky. Also love lo-fi music right now. Oh, yes. My husband was, and my, my um, adult son, they listen to that a lot too, the lo-fi, which is nice. It's very meditative. Um, but it kind of puts me to sleep a little bit. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> I guess that's the point, right? It's supposed to be relaxing. Um, no, I've never seen wheat that I can recall. I live in a very urban area. I live in um, Broward County, South Florida. So uh, the most rural, when I drive anywhere nearby, that's rural. Um, and there are a lot of places. There's farms everywhere in Florida. Uh, we just happen to be in like a very concrete pocket. You know what I mean? Everything's concrete here. Um, uh, we see we see a lot of um, orange groves. So that I've seen a lot of that, and I've seen farms. There's like dairy farms. There's ranches. People, there's a lot of like cattle ranches, cows and and horses, and a few. I don't know if they're donkeys or asses, but one of those. But no, I don't think I've ever seen wheat, and I wonder if it's because it doesn't grow this far south. It's too warm for a lot of crops down here. Like, we'll never see cherry blossoms or apple orchards down here because it's just uh, it's it's just too warm. They they won't grow here. But yeah, Kentucky. That's where my kid lives. My oldest, he lives in Kentucky. He's going to, he's going to university there. He loves school. I'm so proud of him. He's killing it. I'm so proud of you, kid. If you ever watch this, <laughs> oh, I miss him. Um, let's see what else did I want to talk about? Oh, so. Um, Sarah, you said you've never done a sal before. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what a sal is. Um, so you know it's a stitch along, um, and you probably know the basics, but for anybody who doesn't, um, it's an event for a community. 
So we all get together and we stitch the same pattern for a period of time. Um, and that pattern is delivered in bits and pieces. So often it's once a week, once every two weeks. There are year-long sales that are once a month, like um, Peppermint Purple does that. They do a year-long sale. It's um, black work and it's free. Peppermint Purple, just search for them on Instagram or, or um, Facebook. It's free. Gorgeous. I actually don't really like black work that much. So I haven't done it, um, but the cell that she does every year is beautiful. Her patterns are beautiful. They're very colorful. They're very like, uh, very rainbow, you know. Um, she, she often does like a, a rainbow theme in the black work. And so her stitch along is once a month you get a section of the pattern. Um, Stitch alongs are usually online, that way more people can join. Um, I haven't found any locally, and of course now there's... <sighs> We're not gathering together in groups right now. That will change hopefully soon. Um, but um, they're usually online, and so they can be for anything. Like I mentioned a couple of cross stitch ones and a black work one, but there's also sewing stitch alongs. And they're sometimes called sew-alongs or even knit-alongs. So there's knitting and crocheting too. And uh, like I said, you basically just, everybody gets the same pattern and you get it a little bit at a time. And um, it's really fun. Oh, I'll get into, I'll get into that later. So then there's the mystery sal. And a mystery sal is when you don't know what the pattern is when it's finished. You might know um, a portion of it, like you'll know how big a fabric you need to, to do for a cross stitch stitch along or if you do like a knitting or a crochet one they'll tell you like how many balls of floss to buy and for cross stitch they'll also they should a good cross stitch stitch along they will tell you um, how much thread or how much floss of each color you'll need like often the color palette is released ahead of time and then like a basic outline of the stitch along or at least the dimensions. Um, but you don't know the full pattern until you get bits and pieces as it goes, which is kind of fun. Um, so the length of the time, the length of time for a stitch along changes. I feel like I've got an eyelash stuck on my eyeball. <laughs> All the things that happen while you're live on YouTube. So, <laughs> so the length of a time of stitch along varies depending on that particular stitch along. Like I said, that peppermint purple stitch along is year round and she does one every year. So it's, there's a perpetual, perpetual peppermint purple stitch along. <laughs> See that three times fast, right? I'm a nerd. Anyways, um, but they can also be like just a few weeks. Um, I also listened to Hannah Handmakes on um, podcast. Her patterns are really cute and um, her stitch, she did a stitch along that was like five days long and um, she wanted to try it out and do a daily stitch along. Um, so they can be any length of time depending on like what the designer and the producer wants to do. Um, the cool thing is you don't have to finish on time. Like I was way behind on the, the Universal Monster style when I did the Witchy Stitcher stitch along way behind um, but you don't have to be on time you can take your time you can you can um, stitch a little bit and then go on to other things so uh, uh, the community is still there for you um, let's see I think I mentioned that uh, the pattern you can usually get the pattern like via email um, but the witchy stitcher she she provided like an email with a link and you would go to her website and you would download it and then there would be like this whole experience where you would learn about the monsters and stuff and um the snarky and modern cross stitch uh, facebook group their stitch along is only in the facebook group and they are releasing the files inside the facebook group so it's not just email anymore it's kind of cool um people join sales for like a bunch of different reasons um since a stitch along is made up of a lot of smaller pieces the final design is pretty big 
So they're great if you like working on bigger patterns, you end up with like a, usually a, um, a bigger finish, but they're also great if you like working on small patterns and you wanna try a big one because each piece of the pattern is like a mini pattern and it's like a mini finish. And you still get that satisfaction of like a quick finish, which is nice, I gotta tell you. Every time I'm finished with a pattern, I'm like, whoo, what's next? Don't always frame them. I should, well, I don't know. You don't have to. There, I don't like saying should, I really don't. You can do what you want. I do what I want. <laughs> which is usually not frame them, <laughs> but you can. Um, but you still get that like satisfaction of a finish, even if it's not like a FFO, a fully finished object, it's still an FO, right? It's still a finished object. So that's fun. Um, and you can like sneak in also other patterns in between the cell. Like if, if it's a month long, like the peppermint purple cell and um, you finish your section in like a week. Well, you have three weeks to stitch anything else if you want to, you know, I tend to be, a, um, well, I used to be a monogamous stitcher and still I started the Notorious Needle. So now I always have something going on for the, for the Notorious Needle for you. Uh, and then I have other things like, like this um, fairy going on for me. This is just for me. This is going to go in my house. It doesn't match any of my decor. I have a very like modern geometric focused decor, but these little pops of like this softer aesthetic, I think will look nice. But anyways, I'm, I digress. Um, the main reason why I like stitch alongs is for the community. It's a lot of fun to stitch the same thing together. You can share your progress. Pe some people like to brag, oh, I'm the first to finish, you know, which is fun, but you don't have to be. And um, other people like to share the, the, the modifications they made um, or to colors or to the pattern itself. Um, last year with the political therapy collection, uh, there was one of the um, thoughts and prayers patterns. I think it said, um, th it's had thoughts and prayers crossed, crossed out and then underneath it said, um, uh, thoughts and prayers and then it said, I forget what it said, like action and vote or get out and vote or something. Anyway, um, the person changed the colors and I actually really liked their colors better than the colors original to the pattern. So I'm thinking of stitching it that way now. Uh, anyway, so people do that all the time and they like to share it in the community, which is really cool. It's like one of the best benefits of a stitch along, in my opinion. Like I love the community. I love stitching with other people. Um, I'm gonna have to start another section of this. So that <laughs> that's another good reason to join a cell. Um, Others find the motivation in a community really helpful. Like um, you, you might get bored with a pattern over time. Um, like this, this fairy, uh, fairy series that I'm stitching. You guys, I started this like 15 years ago because <laughs> I got bored with it. But that doesn't happen as much with a cell because you've got all this motivation because other people are like, hey, look at, I finished, this is great, or I changed this, or how, how are you doing? Like, you, you don't get bored as easily because you've got other people to talk to about the same pattern and not your husband who's like, oh, yes, dear, that looks very nice. Yes, we can hang that up in the living room, whatever you want. Now, don't get me wrong, he's amazing, right? But it's not the same, he's not a cross stitcher. I might change that. I might change that. Uh, anyways, so uh, the motivation is fun. And um, also some people have a hard time finishing a project, any project, right? Um, we, we, oh, <laughs> cross stitchers are like notorious paddle, pattern collectors. Like we, we definitely, pattern collecting is almost like a, a different hobby it's 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 almost like another hobby and a lot of us uh, do that <laughs> sometimes I do maybe a little bit here and there do I have patterns I haven't stitched probably you know it happens um, but joining a stitch along again you're motivated to finish it uh, and and you 
there's only one person who's going to be the last one finishing, right? So chances are it's not going to be you. So you can take your time, you can enjoy it, but there's always people to talk to. So that's a lot of fun too. And um, also another reason to stitch a uh, stitch along is because they're often a limited time. Um, there's no limited time to like stitching it. Of course, you're at home, you can do what you want, right? But Sometimes the pattern isn't available when the stitch along is over. You can only get it during the stitch along. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen that, but I have seen it. Uh, but none of the ones to my knowledge that I've mentioned are no longer available, like the Peppermint Purple, Caterpillar Cross Stitch, Hannah Head Makes is doing one, and um, the Witchy Stitcher. I know her stitch along from two years ago is still available. But sometimes they're not, so sometimes you want to get on it while the getting's good. And then um, another reason, which is again like an extension of the community, is <laughs> is that like you can learn. Like let's say the stitch along has stitches you don't know how to do, um, you can join the community and people will help you. And and a lot of times you'll have access to the designer, and the designer will answer questions about the pattern, but also maybe about how to do some of the stitches. So you can learn while you're doing it, um, which is awesome. And then at the end of it, you get this finished piece that you like. And um, let's see, I think I had another reason. Oh, of course, surprises. So the mystery style. If you do a mystery style, you don't know what it's going to look like at the end. So every piece is a surprise, uh, which I actually don't really like surprises. I really don't like surprises. And my poor husband tries to surprise me a lot because he loves surprises. And I'm just like, no, I don't, I don't want to be surprised. Just tell me, just tell me. So um, you might be able to like, if you're like me and you hate surprises, you might be able to write to the designer and be like, hey, can I just see what it looks like? Some of them will show you. Um, but if you love surprises and you love the suspense, a stitch along is for you. That's a lot of fun. Um, the only thing is, you know, you will want to, if you're doing a mystery style, you just want to pick a designer, of course, that you like already. You know, you can look through their portfolio of work and um, find something of theirs or, or try, try and get like an idea of their style. And then you can um, trust that you're going to like the style as well. So there's that. I don't know. Let me know if you have any questions about a stitch along. I'll probably put out a video later that goes more over like exactly what's in it. I am going to get lost in this pattern, you guys. I know I'm going to make a mistake. I'm just not used to this setup. I'm getting there. I'm getting used to it, but I'm not used to it. Maybe I'll, I'll only stitch this pattern on this setup. Let's see. One, two, three, four, three, four. Okay, that looks right. All right, so I'm going to go. So I'm gonna do the loop start from the front. So there's the loop and then I'm gonna go back down inside and I'm going to pull the back of the loop with me. I mean, I'm gonna pull the loop to the back. There we go. All right, well, I hope I didn't mess that up. <laughs> I guess I'll find out later when I take a look at this. So that's all about stitch alongs. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I think, um, I think that's all I wanted to cover today. Let me just check my notes. Do, do, do. Calculator, the pole, the stitch along. The free pattern, yay! <laughs> yep. Oh, there was one more thing I wanted to tell you about. You're gonna love this. So, when I started stitching, when I restarted stitching this um, collection of patterns, these fairies, each one of them has um, metallic floss in them. And um, I remember a little floss tube or two ago. Some of you said that you really would love to see like a metallic thread or a specialty thread tutorial. So what I'm starting to do is I am starting to stitch, I, I bought a bunch of them. 
You guys, I went a little crazy. Hold on one second. Let me... <laughs> I'm a dork. I went a little overboard, so let me show you. Let me show you what I did. So I got a bunch of... Can you see? I got, <laughs> got a bunch of metallic threads. And I'm going to try them all out. They're gorgeous. I love the shiny stuff. I love this stuff. I want to put this stuff in my patterns, but a lot of folks won't buy a pattern if it calls for metallic floss because they really hate it because it's Satan's ass hair. I feel you. I really do. After stitching this hot mess and having to stitch four more of these, I feel you. Like, I feel like the, the DMC light effects metallic floss is definitely... It's not as user-friendly as it could be, should I say. I'm gonna just put these back. Um, so I get it. Been there, done that, right? I don't know, have any of you stitched with uh, metallic floss and what did you think about it? Would you recommend it to a friend or would you tell a friend, hell no, don't go there, <laughs> avoid it at all costs, even if it's a pattern that you adore find a substitute and I think what I'll do is I'll if I ever use metallic threads I'm, I will offer like a substitute color that will be similar but it won't have that pop so I'm going to do a comparison of all those threads that I bought I'm stitching up let me show you I've already started this one's gonna take me a while so it probably won't be available for a hot minute but I've already started stitching up little get the needle out of the way little samples of these guys so it's just a little heart and I've got one strand two strand and then blended strand so you could see what they all look like stitched um as this as one strand two strand and and blended and um and then what I'll do is I'll let you know like what the challenges were with each of these brands or each of these types of threads and um what the benefits are how, how easy they were to stitch or difficult or where I, where they might work better in a pattern, stuff like that. So I've already started. So I've got, <laughs> I bought a lot. I, I love the shinies. I wanted to try them all. I, I haven't seen this anywhere. Like I can't find, have you seen it anywhere? Um, Lauren says, I love metallic thread. It's much easier to use if you, did you say co coat it with beeswax? Yes, I have heard that various thread conditioners can work. Thank you, Lauren. Um, I don't tend to use thread conditioners, but I might, I might try that. I might try that. Um, Sarah writes, I love that you went all in on the floss, LOL. Can't wait to see what you find out. Yeah, I went a little overboard. I do that. Yeah, I just dove in head first. Um, but I, I stitched with the DMC light effects metallics for years and they've always been a challenge but you just kind of stick it out right if you really want to stitch something you just kind of deal with it but i i'm starting to wonder like i'm i gotta be honest i'm a total dmc snob i love their cotton threads they're color fast so they don't bleed they don't fray they're really strong and sometimes when i need like i need to sew something really quick and i don't have a regular spool of of sewing thread I'll just use the floss because it's right there and you have it in a variety of colors so it's already like super duper easy um, so I'm a total DMC snob and I understand like, there's different brands and people like to use those and and they work and they work for them and that's great um, but I I stick with what works I don't really I don't I don't change a lot I I should, and that's why I'm doing this experiment because like, there's gotta be something better, right? There's gotta be something better than the Satan's ass hair. So Lauren, I may take your suggestion. I've actually never really tried a thread conditioner on the metallic threads. I've heard that that can help with the DMC. So I, I also, I don't know. Well, I'll go ahead and share this. What I did was I took, <laughs> so for the ones that I've done so far, I took like, what was left on my needles, you could see what the thread looks like when you're done. Cause it's when, when it's on the, 
when it's on the spool, it looks fine. It's beautiful. But when you're done, see the DMC light effects. I don't know how well you can see this. Let me, let me change the view here. So the DMC light effects, like, uh, can you see that it, this is where it was in the eye of the needle. And you get these like weird puckers from the cotton underneath, um, underneath the metallic thread, the metallic part. So it's actually like three parts. It's like, it's two pieces of the metallic thread. I forget what it, what it's made of. I wrote it down somewhere. It'll be in the, it'll be in the tutorial. And then, and then you've got this, like they're wound. Those two pieces are wound around this cotton piece. And that's why the unwinding, um, the, the, the unwinding of those pieces is why it gets like all twisted and tangled up and stuff. So I, I will be doing that for all of them. I've got all of these that I'm going to try, including dun, 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 the DMC gold skein, the golden skein, the skein of floss that is, I believe it's silver and it is dipped in 18 karat gold. I will be on I will be unraveling that skein and using that for the first time as part of this experiment to see, does the real gold work better than the fake gold? I don't know. What do you think? Do you, do you think the real gold will work better than the fake gold? I don't know. That one's going to take me a while. I'm just really excited, so I wanted to show you, but it's going to be, uh, I don't know, February, I think, before I, I'm able to finish that. We'll see how much the sell takes because that that is going to be a lot of work let's see do I want to I do so I'm going to cross this here and I'm going to continue on so yeah what do you think do you think the gold will work better or do you think like the specially designed um metallic flosses will work better because they are specifically chosen those materials are chosen Supposedly, because they work the best for needlecraft. I will attempt to find out. I might even, like, sometimes filming stitching is a little boring, but I might even film that. Although, you know, it can be really relaxing too. Anyways, let me know. So I think what I'll do is I might, I'll send out another poll changing the subject again, back to the Notorious Needle Stitch Along. I'm going to send out another poll and ask if you would like an alternate color palette or if you think like the bright colors will be sufficient. Let's see, is it two? And I dropped the pattern again. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. It's three. It's three. My glove three. Um, if you want an alternate color palette, like I was thinking about doing pastels on black and then doing like the super vibrant bright colors on traditional white, which is the one that I started stitching here. Oh, very bright, very bright orangey, orangey red, reddish orange. Let me know. I'll, I'll post it. I'll post it here. I'll post it in the Facebook group. And if you're not in the Facebook group, why not? You should totally go. A whole bunch of people just joined because they really like the free pattern and they want to talk to you. They want to talk to people like you who, who want to get inspired and do the stitchy stuff together. And I'll probably have the cell in that same group. I think it will be easy to keep everybody all together. Um, I don't think I'm going to create a separate group for just the cell because I would want, I would want to, build a community of stitchers and then keep y'all together. Like keep us together. You know, I think that would be better. And then we can do more cells or we can do more stitches or we can help each other out, you know, cause I feel like, like cross stitches, cross stitchers across the country, across the country, across the world are really like some of the most helpful people in the whole planet because you just ask a question and there's like 70 people who are like, Oh, you should try this. Like Lauren, you should try the condition, thread conditioner, try the beeswax. Like that's a great idea. Or, um, 
try XYZ or try ABC or, hey, I did this thing and it was terrible. Don't do what I did. <laughs> That's usually me. I did a thing and it was terrible. Like, <laughs> like was it, it was 2019. I tried to cross stitch on a pumpkin and it was a miserable failure. And, but I tried again last year and it worked, but you know, I keep telling people like, don't buy the cheap pumpkins. You gotta, you gotta buy the nice ones. Stuff like that, like everybody's very helpful. So, and I really appreciate about, that about you. So I want, I want to see more of that. So maybe I can help facilitate that. Um, in the meantime, it's um, just about 12 o'clock. So I think I'm going to call it quits for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm so glad that you came and spent your time with me today. I, there's nothing more valuable than your time and I really appreciate that. Um, so if you have any questions um, about the upcoming sell, I'll be releasing more information soon. Um, I will have a date for the launch of the sell by February 6th. Uh, and, um, but if you can't wait, shoot me a question and let me know what you'd like to know or what you'd like to see. Let me know if you want that like alternate color palette or, or not, if it's too confusing. Um, I probably wouldn't test stitch that one though because I, I, I won't have enough time and I want to get started. I'm very excited. <laughs> Never done this before, so bear with me. You're very excited. And um, yeah, shoot me a question and it can be about anything. You can ask me about the metallic glosses. Um, if you can't wait for the article to come out later or ask me a question about anything, I love talking about cross stitch. I could do this all day. I'm not going to bore your pants off by doing this all day, literally. Well, I might one day take like a 24 hour cross stitch challenge. I don't know. That could be fun too, right? I have a million ideas. Anyways, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and sign off again. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you next time. In the meantime, Stitch on.